Is your debt causing you sleepless nights? Knock your debt out with Debt KO. And your debt won't be the only thing keeping you up at night. Debt KO, free impartial advice on all your debt. This is Coombe Cassis for Eiffel TV in association with MTK Global. Fight week again here in the Matchroom Residency bubble. I'm joined as always by Tony Bellew, supporting a new style of facial hair. If you want to explain to people why you're doing that, if they don't know, they should do. This is for the Movember, uh, and the main thing I'm doing this for is suicide prevention because it's at an all-time high. So, you know, that's the most important thing. And then that comes in also under prostate cancer and testicular cancer. I've got a friend who had testicular cancer and is a survivor, thankfully. But uh, I lost my uncle to testicular cancer. Uh, very long time ago, so just uh, in memory of him and and uh, you know the suicide prevention for me should be outlined in men's health as well. So for something else, you know, usually we see all these different charities. I just thought, why not look a fool for the month and give people what they want? So I think that the bit the the, the, the donating slowed down a little bit. Lately. So guys, if you find it funny and you're enjoying pissing yourself laughing at me, uh, donate, please. We'll leave the link to the donation page in the description of this video, so have a look there and go and donate. Thank it's all good for, for a good cause. Okay. So, <coughs> um, tomorrow night, um, history is being made. Uh, three world title fights, women's world title fights, uh, that headline this card. And I suppose two or three years ago, you wouldn't really have imagined something like this, but it's brilliant. Yeah, I think it's fantastic. Uh, women's boxing has gone from strength to strength. The lady in the middle has been the forefront runner of it all, Katie Taylor. She has been inspiring in the way she's, you know, drove women's boxing to the level it's at now. Uh, we've seen in all different kinds of fights, at all different kinds of levels. Them last two fights with Delphine Pursum were just fantastic, amazing entertainment. And she shows even in fights when her back's against the wall and she's being pushed relentlessly at an, at an unbelievable pace that she can still adapt and find a way to get the job done. So uh, it's just brilliant to say all three of them, Taylor, Harper, Ball, they're all in really good fights, triple world title header. It good to them not seeing Tasha Jones on this, but looking at the, from the outside looking in, uh, I just can't wait till she's back. Tasha Jones is a big part of women's boxing and, uh, you know, she should be here as well. But politics in boxing and people people just digging their own in sometimes is the biggest headache that you can possibly have. So hopefully it gets resolved and sorted. We'll have an interview going out um, tomorrow, which is the day of the fight of yourself and your fighter, Thomas Whitaker Hart. But just a, a mention for him t for tomorrow for tomorrow yeah, night as well. Whitaker Hart's found his way into this card. I've pestered the life out of Ed. Uh, he's got your main springer in a, in a really hard fight. So, you know, going in with big winning records. Both guys got a point to prove. This is the fight where Thomas Whitaker Hart can can announce himself on the light heavyweight scene. It really is. You know, people are looking at this fight thinking it's a test. Is it too far? You know, he's got double the amount of bouts that, that Thomas Whitaker Hart's got. But Springer's a test. But listen, if you can't beat Jermaine Springer, then, you know, you're not going the place that I think you should be going. Uh, former GB rep, being all around the world representing his country, ABA champion, Thomas Whitaker Hart's done the lot. So, you know, I expect him to go out there on Saturday night and shine. No two ways about it, Cuban. I expect a, a ruthless victory and I expect him to look good at every step of the way. So, that's it. And I've got my old mate looking over me as well. If people didn't realise actually who Tony's uh, sitting next to. Yeah, just the last one to give me a hiding. Uh, so, you know, nice. Darak, Darak. I love Alexander. Now nah, we get on great. We're all supposed to be going for to have a game of golf together once uh, once all this nonsense is over. So, really good lad. I think the world of him uh, just gutted that. Uh, he's fought me, mate, and gets that victory. But he's won. He's got the victory. And uh, that's, you know, they both go on to different different things. 
Um, I do want to ask you about another fight that's happening in America between, obviously, Kell Brook and, and yes. Terence Crawford. We, we mentioned it, obviously, last week. But the fight itself, we know this is going to be a difficult fight for Kell Brook. But can, can he pull it off? Credit to Kell Brook for taking it, first and foremost. Uh, looking, looking once again from the outside, then I think it's a really dangerous mask, uh, match because... This is the first time he's, he's made welterweight since fighting Ella Spence. And yes, although he looks in absolutely phenomenal shape, it's, it's, it's a struggle, mate. It really is. New training team around him, uh, different settings, different location, yes. But it, it's. The thing is with Kelbrook, and it's mad that I'm saying this, but have we ever seen his, poten his full potential fulfilled? I just. At welterweight, I just don't know if we have. Yeah, but even then, he's, it's like he still had more. He was only worried about doing the 12 rounds, so he doesn't set the pace on fire from early doors. And he comes, he only really goes well in the fight when he knows he's going to see the 12 rounds, you know what I mean? So he doesn't go all out from the round one to the end. So I think it was a great showing against Spence. I think he really dug in and he was having a good go at Spence until, you know, what happened, happened. Uh, but I don't know It's mad with Kel because... He's one of the most naturally talented fighters this country's ever produced. And I'd hate to see his career go down as someone who's as underachieved. I'd hate to see that because it wouldn't be fair, you know what I mean? Because he's had the opportunity, there's no two ways about that. He's had every opportunity given to him on a plate. Uh, and he, he's stepped up and fought some of the brilliant fighters of this era. The likes of Golovkin, the likes of Spence when he's needed to. So, but... I don't know, it's just something missing that. Really, I don't like the fight going in. I just think it's all stacked in in Crawford's favour. But I think Crawford's an amazing fighter. He's, he's got an argument and possibly the right to say he's pound for pound number one fight in the world right now. His victories over the years have just been not, not, not short of astounding and remarkable the way he's gone about them. So I expect that a ruthless tense Crawford. Uh, I think Kel's size will be a bit of a factor early doors. Uh, not so much the size, because he's not that much bigger. Kel's not that much bigger. I just think the, ge the general all-round strength of Kel will be a f an issue in the first couple of rounds. But then I ultimately believe that weight will be an issue, mate, how he's got back down there. Fighters don't make weight easier as they get older. That's not me putting it out there. That's just a fact. As fighters get older, they do not make weight better. They deteriorate as they get older. Every single fight in the history of boxing has done it. Any fighter who's gone up and came back down, there's only been one fighter in the history of boxing who's done it with great success. Only ever one fighter. I believe you may meet I know the sport. Only one fighter ever went back up and had real success after he came back down, and that's Floyd Mayweather. So, and I just think Kelbrook coming back down to welterweight after spending and messing around at middleweight, then messing around at light middleweight, and now coming back down to welterweight. I don't think it ends well. I hope he proves me wrong. I'm, you know, I'm backing him and hoping he wins, but if you're asking me to just ask me, do I think he's going to win? No. I think Terence Crawford is, is a special, special fighter. OK, um, just moving on from there. Reports suggest that Callum Smith may still land the Canelo fight. He's been linked with Canelo, obviously, over the last few months, but... There's a situation, obviously, with Canelo and Golden Boy and the zone, etc. But the fight... Well, the situation's all been cleared up, hasn't it? You know, Canelo's left Golden Boy. Uh, I've seen the settlement, the documentation that, that De La Hoya put out, and he said he's very happy with the settlements and stuff like that. So Canelo's now in the driving seat, and it shows all along that, as we all know, and I've always thought this, Canelo wants to face anyone and everyone. He wants the best. I knew that when he chose Kovalev. Uh, but this is a bit of a different ball game once again in my opinion. It just shows Canelo how much he believes in himself. Uh, and it also shows that Oscar De La Hoya was pretty careful in matching him when he was in control, to be fair, because they didn't want no parts of Callum Smith and now all of a sudden Callum Smith's back in the frame and it, it's closer than it's ever been before. So I think it's a brilliant fight. Uh, let me tell you, mate, if anyone's going to do Canelo, it's going to be Callum Smith. I think Canelo, Canelo Alvarez is probably the best counterpuncher in the world of boxing right now. I don't think that can be disputed. Everyone will go on about what I've said in the past, yeah, but that's got no way, shape or form. doesn't say anything right now because he's being allowed to fight. Once you've passed all your things and done that, 
Do I think you're a scumbag for what you've done in the past? Yes, I do. Uh, do I think it's wrong? Everyone knows my thoughts on it. But when you are scheduled and you are passed into fight, it's done. It's no longer then in our control. So I have to give my comments and then I have to give what I think will happen. I think Callum Smith's got every opportunity and every chance to knock Canelo out. I really do. Uh, and Canelo will get the shock of his life when he feels the strength of Callum Smith up close. Do you think that Callum Smith's got a better chance of beating Canelo than Billy Joe Saunders has? That's a really good question, that Cougs. Uh, what I would say is Callum Smith has to go through to adopt the tactics to beat Billy Joe, to, to beat Canelo. Callum Smith will, uh, an approach, uh, will approach it with a completely different game plan to what Billy will approach it with. So it will be a, a more of a damaging fight for Callum Smith should he come through it than it would for Billy Joe if he came through it. So... To answer your question, mate, I don't know because the, both of them are undefeated. We don't know how good a header really is. Have we? Uh, we've seen Callum Smith push to the brink when he's underestimated fighters and make no mistake. Yes, he underestimated John Ryder. Did he? Did he beat him? Absolutely, he beat John Ryder. I'm sick of people saying just because someone does better than you thought he done it does not mean he won. I've seen it time and time again. Carlos Baldemir against Floyd Mayweather. He does far better than everyone anticipates. It doesn't mean he beat him. Jose Luis Castillo done far better than anyone imagined against Floyd Mayweather. Did he beat him? No, he didn't beat him. My darn, people say the first one. My darn, insane, he didn't win. He just done better than you expected. Don't let that sway your actual judging on a bout. Uh, people will watch this and go, well, Tony Bell, you were saying Derek Chisora beat Zuzic. I didn't say Derek beat him. What I asked for was the judges should be similar in the scorecards. The scoring should be similar. That's all I said. I didn't say he won this or that. I just said you, there should be transparency in boxing and in how judges are seeing fights. I believe the open scoring should be out there. I don't see why it shouldn't. Because we need to know what these judges are seeing midway through a fight. We need to know if they're acting the bollocks after six rounds at 6-0 when a fight should really be 3-3. Three, three. So, uh, on the Canelo thing, Billy Joe Sun's a brilliant fighter and he will approach the Canelo fight in a completely different way that Callum Smith was going to. The both of them pose Canelo different problems. Billy Joe's got fantastic feet and footwork. Callum Smith's got height, size and reach and is a brilliant body puncher. Straight away, I've just talk, talked out the strengths of both fighters and they're completely separate to each other. So, a lot of it depends on how is Canelo going to approach the fight, what would, what would his tactics be going in. I think Callum Smith is the harder fighter to beat. Because Canelo, you've got to understand, is used to walking fighters down, chasing them around the ring. What he's not used to is someone bullying him. I don't think we've ever seen him bullied. We've seen Kovalev try it, and we've seen Kovalev fail. Callum Smith's a different prospect from, from, from Kovalev. Kovalev's coming towards the end of his career. He's six foot two. Callum's six foot four. That extra height and reach. And the maddest part about it is Callum doesn't really actually is happy to mix on the inside. I know he is. But if he just puts Canelo on a jab, which he has the tools and, and skills to do that, then it just makes it such a hard job for for Canelo. But you know, as you've seen, he's already prepared for it. Someone sent me a video of Canelo sparring a heavyweight. I just thought this kid's just fearless. He does not care, literally. So but you know. How was he sparring a heavyweight? But I don't know, you tell me. Okay, uh, just moving back towards the heavyweights. Obviously, we'd like to get your opinion on a range of things because we know you're quite knowledgeable about what's going on in boxing. Well, you know. um, so, I know you've spoken about this already, but Wilder puts out a tweet to Tyson Fury the other day. I don't know if you've seen it. Well, I did follow Tyson. I'd like to still follow Tyson Fury, to be honest, but he blocked me. And he's never unblocked me, so I don't know why. Uh, I actually like Tyson Fury. I go way back with him. Uh, and I, I think he's brilliant at what he does, but he blocked me, and he's, it is what it is. But I don't ever, you know what, I don't think I ever really, I don't ever slag fighters. If, if, I'm, if, if you're going to call me names or you're going to have a pop at me, oh, I'll fire back. But I don't think I've ever in my life just 
gone all out on a fighter for no reason at all. I'm not a bully. I'm not a. I'm not a troll. I'm not a thing. Yo, so I don't actually get it. If I've probably put, I think Anthony Joshua's going to beat him. Then that's just my opinion. But as I've said before, I've been wrong more times than I've been right. So you know, it's just a prediction. It's not a personal slant on him. I think it's amazing. I think he's brilliant what he's doing. I love the thing that he's doing. I think the positive mental attitude and. And, and the men's, you know, mental state and mental health. I think it's brilliant what he's doing. So it is what it is. But what's the tweet that yeah. Deontay oh, Wilder put me, out? Um, I'll show you the tweet that he tweeted to him. Okay. And then you can obviously make up your. You are shaking. You need to stop smoking. Hey Tyson Fury, don't worry about me. I am fine. Blessed. The only thing I want from you is for you to honor your agreement and fight me. I gave you two shots when I didn't have to and changed your life. Now it is time for you to be a man and give me my shot as you agreed to. Ah, uh, okay. That was, um, that was yesterday, I think. Yes, yesterday. The date and time on that? Three in the morning, but that's here. So he's obviously wherever he is. So it's early afternoon there. Yeah. Uh, Okay, uh, of course I get what he's saying, you know, but I just think that video was just, oh, just disaster. When Eddie showed me that video, I could, I could not believe it. I literally couldn't believe it. I, I just, I was just like, wow, 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 wow. You've got big, big boy advisors around you, you know, and they're allowing you to come out and say that. Now, I don't know what Tyson's response to it was, actually. Didn't he? I, I haven't seen a response as I, of such. I heard him, actually, on Talk Sport. That's the, that's the best I've got at Tyson Fury. Uh, I listened to him on Talk Sport the other day. He spoke a lot of sense. Uh, I'm not sure if that his Talk Sport interview was before or after that tweet, so I don't know. He has responded, and he said that he's concerned for Wilder's kind of... Yeah, he was. On, yeah. on Friday, he was on... No, so what day? It's Friday today. On, he was on Talk Sport on Wednesday morning. That's when he was on TalkSport. He was definitely Wednesday morning. I think that tweet was after his interview on TalkSport, I think. Tell a lie. He was on TalkSport on Thursday morning because I was in the car, dropped the kids off at school, and then I chose to drive up here. He was on TalkSport yesterday morning, 100%. No two ways about it. So I listened to what he'd said, and he said he was concerned for the guy's mental health, and he said, I'm always there for you if you need me. Uh, which I know Tyson Fury, he genuinely means that. Lad with a good heart and a decent person. He spoke a, li he spoke a little bit about how, he, you know, he likes Anthony Joshua and he thinks he's a brilliant fighter and an athlete. Got all respect for him. It's all great, it's all well and good. All these fights say all these things, but ultimately, just get in the ring and let's see what you've got. That's it. I, I hope Deontay Wilder comes back. I really do. Do you think he will, though? Yes. Yes. For the simple word of money. Money demands he comes back. And he's still... The book's not closed on him because of what he's capable of doing and how dangerous he is. <clears throat> Tim, if you could FaceTime me, you could see what I'm doing. Face, I'm going to FaceTime you. That's Tim. What a guy this fella is. This Tash is absolutely disgusting. And the mad thing is, the Tash is jet black and my ears brown. It's like a dimey Tash on my beard. How are you, mate? I'm just doing an interview at the minute. As you can see. See you soon, lad. Uh, mate, have you, I'm going to have to catch Chase on the hour plus. I'll see you in a bit. Oh, don't say it. See you after. Turn out. Turn out. Give you the shower when we're done. Turn out, mate. Sorry. That's all right. That's all right. So, you don't think he's done because of the money factor. You believe at some point next year he'll be back? Yes, he'll be back. He'll be back.
he's still he's still he's such a dangerous he's a draw as well I know he's not a draw as in numbers and crowds and stuff but his name he carries weight now you know and, and the, the Tyson Fury fights have grown him and his grown his stature grown his profile so there's, there's, there's space for him back in there what do you think when you look back to that little altercation that you had with him uh, at the weigh-in? I think we one of Joshua's fights. Had Joshua clips go? What when you kind of look back at that now? What do you? I don't need that in my life. Yeah. Don't need that smoke. But at the time, it was a different matter, wasn't I had it? A different mentality, I had a different mindset. I was willing to throw down with anyone. So I was willing to just go at it. You put it on me, I'm going to put it right back on you. So I didn't care. I've gone a bit softer in my old age and a little bit more wise. I think his brother was more vocal towards you than he actually he was. I've never met him alive. He's been knocked out twice off journeyman, I think. So someone told me that. I don't even know if that's true, but I've met him alive, mate. But yeah, don't say well, I didn't need none of that. Size and reach on him. Imagine one of them right hands hitting my nose. It's been broken enough times as it is. Probably take me nose off me face. Um. Sticking with heavyweights, Dillian White's fight with Povetkin, which was obviously the rematch was scheduled to take place next weekend, isn't going to take place. Uh, it'll be pushed back till uh, early 2021. Dillian White believes that things may not be all they seem. I get that, because I thought that at first. I thought a bit later in the day to be getting COVID, you're basically in a bubble. When you're in camp, you've been in that bubble, so I find it very hard to believe. But then I was informed he was in hospital, so I was like, oh, OK, he has got it. So I don't know. Uh, to be honest, Pavek and Dodgers, no one really does he. He's faced everyone and anyone of the last decade in heavyweight boxing. Klitschko, Joshua. He's faced them all, mate. He's faced them all. Uh, so I'd be surprised, but you don't know. He might just want to enjoy Christmas. <laughs> you don't know. You just you don't know what's going through a fight's mind. Sometimes he might have a niggle, an injury, an injury that doesn't pass off as pulling out of a fight. But COVID, just as soon as you mention COVID, it's off. So I don't know. I mean, COVID affects people in different ways, doesn't it? So it's just different for different people. There was a talk for around a day of possibly Chisora coming in to fight Dillian White. I'm sure you would have seen that. I think it was quickly squashed by Eddie Hearn saying that's not going to happen. Uh, Chisora put himself up for that fight as soon as he found out that... Put him out straight away. Uh, I just want Del to rest for a minute. Just have some time off and just look after your body and recuperate. That was a hard fight last time out with Alexander Usyk. It's a hard fight. Took a lot of shots. Uh, landed a lot of shots too. Swung a lot of leather. Put a lot of work in. Just to, he put a lot of work in Cooks for a year. He trained hard. He was in great shape, uh, and he really did push Alexander Usyk all the way. He really did. He gave a great account of himself. But just re just take some time off now and rest. The sports can be so damaging if you don't do the rest periods in between. So he just needs to have a little blow, in my opinion. He'll be back. Let's see him in a fight, in, in a good fight, in early in the new year, because he'll be ready. Enjoy Christmas. Enjoy your new year. And then I'd see him back in the ring in February. What, what do you think Usyk will do? Do you think he will kind of put he that mandatory situation aside? He wants to face anyone and everyone. He's fearless. Just look in his eyes, he's fearless. Brilliant fighter. But in terms of him being mandatory to Anthony Joshua, what do you think he he'll do? do? what he wants. He's in that position. He's mandatory challenger. Yes, will he want to wait on the sidelines? No. Uh, a uh, unification supersedes a mandatory. That's in the rules of every organisation. So, if there's a, if there's a unification to be done, then he will be superseded regardless of what he thinks. The problem then comes with then, Pulev's a mandatory. So, so, Usyk will be the mandatory, but then Usyk will be in position to face him but then he would, there will be other mandatory. So once someone's got all four belts, let's just say AJ does do the do the inevitable and does get all the belts, or Fiori gets all the belts, they're gonna, them two guys, whoever wins is going to have two mandatories immediately forced upon them straight away, and one of the belts is going to become this, this, you know, this franchise, whatever you want to call it, removed from the equation. Mm -hmm. So it can't happen. No one's going to hold all them belts at once without 
because you can't do two mandatories at once. So the sanctioning bodies will force their mandatory as soon as that fight is over and that a winner is crowned. So well, you won't remain undisputed, unified for long, unless you've gone through all the contenders, which, to be fair, Anthony Joshua has really done. He's gone through the contenders. You look at the names and people he's faced as he's gone through them, you know, he's, he's got some great names on the record. So let's just say Pavekin beats Dillian White again. Pavekin's been dealt with by the AJ, so they're not going to force their hand with AJ and, and, and Pavekin rematch. Dillian beats it, Pavekin in this rematch, which I think he will. He's mandatory with the WBC, but then he's lost his last fight, so he's going into the fight with one loss in, in his last two. There's so many different things, formalities that you've got to look in and look in place. I would say the only solid one is Usyk, because he's undefeated. He's been waiting his time. He's beat such and such, beat such and such. I still think he needs another fight at heavyweight against a different kind of heavyweight now. We've seen him face a similar heavyweight of different size. Proportion. Derek Chisora is a heavy heavyweight, if that in weight, if that makes sense. But in size and stature, we need to see him face a David Price. But Derek Chisora has knocked out David Price, so I don't. I just a big heavyweight, a big useful heavyweight, you know, or you know, a, a, a close contender. The perfect fight for Usyk was the Pavekin fight, which he agreed to, and it fell through in the end. That sh that gives you the barometer of, of, of Alexander Usyk, which I think he beats Pavekin, and I think he beats him easy. Uh, I just think he's too too slick, too clever for him. So it'll be interesting to see what his next steps is. But ultimately, mate, I'm a fan of Alexander Usyk. I've been beat up by him. I've shared the ring with him. He's phenomenal. He's an amazing fighter, mate. So I'm supporting him unless you know he's fighting people who are really, really no one like. And, and, and really care about like Dell. I'm not going to keep you so much longer because I know you are look like you're tired. What? All oh, right. What is your understanding of this new weight division, Bridger weight, that's being formed by the WBC? We've read a lot about it. We've heard from Maurizio Suleiman about it. But what is your understanding of exactly how this is going to work? So now I've just got news today that the weight division has been taken back down to what it used to be, 190, the old cruise weight division, which is brilliant because 175 to 190 is the perfect jump from light heavyweight to cruiser weight. If you're really struggling on light heavyweight, uh, which I used to, and I mean really struggle. I, I would get in the ring and be 190 the next day. So now it allows the weight division to be too much. But at the same time, for the fighters, when it was 175 to 200, that's when you're coming across problems because then you can have a fighter who weighs in at 180 and he faces a guy who's 200. So possibly he's weighed in at 180, the next day he's 181. The guy who's in the ring is now 210. These are the kind of mismatches we want to stay well away from in boxing. I got in the ring with a longer Macabu. I was probably about 213, two 214 when I got in the ring uh, at Goodison Park. I would say he was not, he, well, I think he was about two or three pounds under when he fought me. I would say he was barely 200 pounds when I got in. This is one, it's, it can be dangerous at times. But people will say now, it's done okay for now. Well, it got done okay because people, the cruiserweight division got lifted because the heavyweights were still smaller then. But now you're getting big cruiserweights and little cruiserweights. The perfect example was Isaac Chamberlain and Lon Sicoli. It looked like a light heavyweight against the cruiserweights, and this is what we can't have happen in boxing. I don't think fighters should ever lose purely because of the size. This is why we have weight divisions. And I just think the move that WBC done is brilliant. They, uh, they, done, they come to me with the idea and then they asked me my opinion. I gave them my opinion was the jump is just far too big from light heavyweight to cruiserweight. It, it's physically dangerous because as I've touched on, I will go over it again. A guy can get in the ring and be 180 and face a guy who's on the ring in fight night and he's 210 and they're both classed as cruiserweights. That can be a world title fight. In what world, in what realm is a 30 pound weight difference fair? So the WBC, the first to take it on board, and I believe the other, the other sanctioning bodies will follow suit. I think it's brilliant. I think it's a great example. And most importantly, it puts safety first. Boxer's health is, is you know, the most important fundamental in boxing. Health before wealth, 100%. So 
very well done. Congratulations, and, and I amend Maurizio Suleiman, a brilliant, brilliant, you know, president of the WBC organisation. He's striving just to make the game safer, and you've got to commend that and applaud it. You really, really have. So, the bridge weight is from 190 to 220. They are for your genuine heavyweights, but genuine heavyweights who are small. That's all it's for. So, you know, in an ideal world, the perfect first fight there would have been Usyk v Wilder. Two guys who could comfortably make that weight. Usyk wants to come in around 215 to 217. Wilder comes in 216 at times. Perfect weight, perfect fight. But, as I said, I understand why they're going up because Usyk's chasing the money and chasing the glory. But ultimately, his natural weight division and weight class is that bridge of weight division. That, that, that's just his perfect weight division. I was fortunate for me, I carry the size and height that I can fluctuate between them two divisions. But don't get me wrong, if I get a fighter on the, on the wrong end of the bridge of weight division, I could be going in with a bit of a monster. So I think if Joseph Parker trims and does it right, but he's in good, really good shape anyway. All his, all his weight is in his legs and ass with Joseph Powell. He's got big, strong legs and a big ass. But that's that could be could be a weight division for him. It's really shining. So I don't know. It's an interesting division. We'll have to see if it takes time. As I was speaking to the WBC committee and, and the president, Maurizio Suleiman, I'd explained to him that, although, yes, I've spoken to some fighters, it's not the fighters that you want to get on board. It's just purely look at the the logistics and the restrictions. And the most of all, the paramount is the safety is paramount. That's the most important thing. You have to create safer thingos in boxing divisions in boxing. The highest weight jump in the boxing besides the light heavyweight now to cruiserweight Coogan is eight pound. Why should something be triple another one? It's insane. Mm. And if anything, boxing only gets more dangerous the higher the weight divisions go. So why not, you know, manipulate it a little bit better and a bit more stricter in the higher weight classes? So I'm happy it's been done and I commend the WBC. What do you think the other governing bodies will do? Do you think they'll just sit yes. sit back and wait and see what happens with that? Of course they will, because, you know, it, it, it's very brave from the WBC and it takes some, someone to be brave and the others to sit up to take notice. What I think they'll do is they'll see the fighters now will start fluctuating. We're, they're going to make the mind up which one are you? Are you the cruiserweight or are you going to be the bridge weight? So, but they'll they'll see. Uh, as I say, just make much more safety safety in numbers. Because as I say, I, I was classed on the big side of the cruiserweight division, but I would have made 190. I would have made that no problem. There would have been a bit of a cut in it for me, but I'd have made it. And then in the ring on the night, I probably I'm 200. If I'm doing it right, uh, maybe a bit heavier, 215. So it just it all depends on, but as I say, by getting you down to that 190 for weighing, you know, it, it's you're you're always going to get them incredible fighters. So I always remember the late great Arturo Gatti many years ago, and he weighs in on the morning of the weighing. The next day, he's 20 pounds heavier. I think it was against uh, Gamash, Joey Gamash, and uh, he puts him in a really bad way. Now, that's the last thing we want to see in boxing again, fighters being really here because someone's outweighed by so much. Uh, but I, I think by doing this bridge weight division, that's what we're taking away a little bit more in the higher weight class. As I say, it could be even more if you'd allow the cruiserweight division to stay from 175 to 200. You're going to see that more and more. And you see really nasty knockouts in that division. And let's not forget, cruiserweights essentially are heavyweights who have to diet. That's all they are. Believe you me, I know. I was one. Um, just finally on that, thoughts on the name? We know why, but... Yeah, it was uh, after the young boy attacked. Yeah. So, that's the WBC's job to name the division. Uh, super cruiser, you know, junior heavyweight. Uh, there was a number of them that you could see, or cruiser plus, I don't know. But that's their decision, and I think... You know, it's commendable that they're giving honour to a, to a young child who's shown, you know, immense amount of bravery and, 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 and whatever have you, so that, that's on them. OK, Tony Belly, thank you very much for talking to Eiffel TV once again. Seems like we're doing this regularly now as your resident uh, member of the bubble here. Um, yeah, so everyone tune in, basically, to triple women's world title header tomorrow night.
and also Thomas Whitaker Hart in action against Jermaine Springer. Do not forget, guys, and don't forget to donate to the Tash. November is out there, and we need to raise money to help prevention of suicide, prostate cancer, testicular cancer, and men's health and well-being. Is your debt causing you sleepless nights? Knock your debt out with Debt KO. And your debt won't be the only thing keeping you up at night. Debt KO. Free, impartial advice on all your debt. <laughs>